And Mr. Greider? Here. And Ms. Wilder? Here. All right. Here. And Mr. Foyce is here, obviously. I'm not going to join. Okay, I just joined you. Thank you. Excuse All right, me. and just for uh, the public, uh, we have two of our city council members that are joining um, via Zoom, and uh, we know one of those is uh, he, he's with child right now, so uh, <laughs> congratulations, Mr. Nichols, uh, as well. Thank and you. And Mrs. Nichols, I'm thank sorry. You, thank you. I'm sorry. For, you know. <laughs> All right, well, let me uh, stop while I'm behind. Uh, could you please join me in a moment of silence? All right, thank you. Uh, would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. All right, so I make a motion for the approval of the agenda as proposed, as well as the approval of minutes of the May 30th, 2023 planning session as proposed. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Yep. All right, we have an agenda. Um, uh, the first item is the reading of a, the proclamation for Juneteenth. I would like to ask Latanya Graves, please come up front to join us. All right, City of Waterloo, Iowa Proclamation. Whereas on June 19th, 1865, Union soldiers led by Major General Gordon Granger landed at Galveston, Texas to enforce President Lincoln Emancipation Proclamation and declare freedom for all slaves. Whereas each year, former Texas slaves and their descendants join in a celebration of freedom and the commemoration became known as Juneteenth. And whereas across our nation, Americans celebrate Juneteenth, a day to reflect on the sufferings of slavery and to remember the joyful declaration of freedom. It is time of rejoicing with family and friends and a time for planning the future. And whereas this celebration gives us the opportunity to commemorate African-American heritage as we honor the courage and fortitude of our ancestors, we renew our commitment to combat injustice with the triumphant spirit of freedom. Now, therefore, I, Quentin Hart, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, do hereby proclaim June 19, 2023, as Juneteenth celebration. In the City of Waterloo, we acknowledge the many contributions of African Americans have made to our great nation. Today is an opportunity to recommit ourselves to confronting injustice wherever we find it and upholding the dignity of all people. And by doing so, we protect the freedom and democratic ideals that will keep America strong for generations to come. Latanya. Well, thank you so very much, Mayor Quentin Hart. So this is our 28th annual Juneteenth celebration. This year is going to take place in Sullivan Brothers Memorial Park, located at East 4th and Adams Street in Waterloo, if you didn't know. And so we will kick it off uh, with a peace walk beginning at 12 noon, Ferguson Field, to Sullivan Park. And then the festivities will begin in Sullivan at 1 p.m. So you are all invited to attend. Again, this is our 28th year. And so we would like to see all of you there. If you're not doing anything on Saturday, please show up and enjoy the festivities that are going to take place. We have some awesome uh, performers, um, an awesome group coming from Chicago, Illinois, and some awesome Waterloo uh, performers that will be there as well. So we look forward to seeing you there, June 17th. All right, and uh, I'll be there with the boot on. I got a little secret that's coming up here next week. Thank you. But uh, Tanya, I just want to tell you, um, I know that you're only 25, and this has been going on for 28 <laughs> years. 
Um, so we just want to thank you for all of your efforts for leading the charge. I think back 20 plus years ago, you got me engaged with uh, Mary Tarot, and you're doing a fantastic job. And I know you can't do it all by yourself. I want to thank everyone that's partnering with you and your committee uh, for making sure that you continue to commemorate MLK Day, Juneteenth, and fighting against any type of injustice within our local community. So God bless you and thank you for all your efforts. Thank you very much. All right. I was saying, get it to California. <laughs> Going back to Cali. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, safe travels. Thank you. All right. I think they're just making a short presentation. Okay, well, we have some invitations to pass out, and Ayara here is going to maybe pass you some invitations. Um, I am Heidi Footman. I'm the Youth Art Team's Executive and Creative Director. I'm sorry. Now we have a presentation from our Youth oh. Art Team about their open house celebration and project. And hi, Heidi. How are you today? Hi, good. How are you? Good. Okay, so I'm Heidi Footman. I'm the Executive and Creative Director of Youth Art Team. Um, we're located at 325 East Park Avenue in the Old Masonic Temple Building. So Youth Art Team's oldest artist, has, they've started um, reviewing project requests, and they decided to pick up this new project over a year ago after Iowa Educational Services for the Blind and Visually Impaired approached us about um, thinking about artwork for students with low or no vision. So Youth Art Team artists spent last fall learning uh, ISBBI provided vision simulator kits to help us experience a variety of visual impairments that um, people experience. And the artists also interviewed uh, volunteers and professional artists about um, everyday tools they use and how they experience artwork. So Youth Art Team practiced both making art but also experiencing artwork which um, with low or no vision, which led the team to create an art installation this spring designed to be fully experienced with no vision. Um, my name is Nair Miles. I'm a youth artist. I've been a youth art team for almost 10 years now. Um, I'm one of the artists who picked the project. Um, the public is invited to explore the installation on Tuesday, June 6th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the youth art team headquarters, 325 East Park Street in Waterloo. This event is free and accessible to people with <laughs> to all ages and abilities. We hope that the art will make our guests feel curious, cozy, and at home. Okay, so if you're not able to attend tomorrow, um, the installation is available for groups or individuals um, by appointment. So you can find Youth Art Team on Facebook. You can email heather at youthartteam.com, or you can call or text Youth Art Team at 319-343-8029. We also expect that eventually this installation will be ready to travel um, to other locations. So, But we hope that you guys will come on out tomorrow between 4.30 and 6.30 to experience the art and meet the artists who made it. So um, if you have any questions, we're happy to take those. But otherwise, we're just happy to be here. And how do you do? Uh, incredible work. Um, we know that you've worked throughout this community. Uh, if you were to bring up the young people within this community, and you do it in such a beautiful way. And uh, I just was looking through uh, the pedestrian bridge with the way the lights are on the inside. And I'm just very thankful for all your work and for all your effort over the years. And I'm thankful to the young people you work with every day. So my hat's off to you. And we're asking everyone in the community, uh, Tuesday, June 6th on this holiday uh, from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Uh, there's an open house celebration for the Youth Art Team headquarters, and that's 325 East Park Avenue. So come and experience the art uh, with even if you have challenges with vision as well. So thank you so much. All right, it's now time for oral presentations. Your opportunity to address the city council on non-agenda related items. Please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and let us know your thoughts. Yeah, Ron Spears, I live at 228 Prospect Avenue. And I just, I don't know what the agenda is for this council, 
but I want to encourage keeping uh, 5th and 6th Street one-way avenues when you live on Highland and and you have to go clear over on West Ridgeway, it's really important to get over there as soon as you can. And so that's about a 15 minute drive without any stops. So I just wanna encourage you to keep that open. And also, I don't see any reason for having a roundabout at the five corners. I go through there most every day and we really need a roundabout on Ridgeway and Hammond, but that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Forest Dillaboo, 1725 Huntington Road. Uh, I would like to draw your attention to the courier tonight. There are five pages of people who have not paid their taxes. I think that it speaks very loud words about the financial condition of the citizens of Waterloo. Especially tonight, it looks like we're giving out some, what I would call healthy pay raises. We are going to be spending advertising dollars. And I'm not sure about the June date, whether that's going to be a paid holiday or just declared a holiday. But it's very spendy, and these people who weren't able to pay this time will definitely have problems in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name's Greg Bazan, 1803 Downing Avenue. I know that the fireworks are the third and fourth, and I'd really like to see it expanded to the weekend before the fourth, being Friday and Saturday, because a lot of people still have to work on the third and fourth, fifth, and this would give them an opportunity to celebrate uh, the founding of the United States. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yes, yeah, sir. And we've we've gone. <laughs> I don't know how many times uh, we we've kind of changed things. It, you know, and the challenge with uh, the weekend before, is if it was on a Thursday, so it's yeah. So sorry about it. It's just a um, a hard hard process to try to really get our hands around. But I think council has tried to be uh, flexible as well. So we appreciate your comments. Yes, sir. David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Uh, we seem to be able to assess people for uh, unpaid snow, hazardous trees, uh, weed mowing, lot cleanup, and sidewalks that they have a problem with. Uh, as I drive around, I see many dead trees for years in not only the parking, or the easement, I should say, but on private property. Every year, we tag people for bad sidewalk sections, but we can't seem to tag people for a, a dead tree or get the city to take down a tree that is dead, that's hanging over the street that might fall on my truck when I'm driving by. Uh, that is a safety hazard, because if it falls on my truck, while I'm driving by, I might not be here today. So I guess I don't understand why we can assess for sidewalks, but we can't assess or take down dead trees in the parking when we take down green ash trees that are not likely to fall down right away. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can contact Paul's office if uh, Mr. Um, um, you can contact Paul's office if you got some specifically for him. He just gave me the nod, so thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Rex Rhodes. I live at 1707 Upton Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, this morning I'm going to be dead today. I've called the city council, the people across the street. I moved here five years ago. The speed limit is terrible. We're asking for a speed bump. Traffic operations has come out last couple of years. We haven't got one yet. I've called the city police department this morning. I've also called our council ward person. She called me back today. 
And uh, we're concerned. There's no sidewalks there. Our kids walk in the streets. Our dogs walk on the streets. Um, I'd be dead flat on the road this morning. I wish they would have got the woman's license plates. I'm more than welcome to have rainbows out in front of our house today. Or why don't cops sit, or vacant cop cars sit there on the corner. 55, 60 mile an hour on Upton Avenue in a 25 mile an hour zone is terrible. And as everybody above Admore Street going towards Valvoli going to the west, and it's all those people coming over the top of the hill, they're going to kill somebody. And it's all younger people. That's all I have to say. Hopefully somebody will do something. All right, thank you. I know Mr. Uh, the Chief just took uh, notes on that situation, so thank you for bringing it to uh, our attention this evening. My name is Larry Stummy. I live at uh, 1008 Lois Lane um, in Waterloo. Dr. Michael Blackwell and myself, uh, for the third time, are addressing you, you who were elected to represent the people, but more importantly, to make Waterloo a safe and a fair place for its citizens to live and raise a family. The past two meetings, I have addressed the issue of dilapidated, abandoned, unsafe dwellings. For example, I pointed out the neglected home on East 2nd Street damaged by fire in August of 22, and the dangerously neglected multifamily dwellings in the area of Franklin Vinton Streets. I do appreciate the letter that I received from the, your city attorney in response to these concerns. I would uh, um, ask and request that if there is any further uh, communication, you would also send a copy or make a make the address to uh, Dr. Blackwell and myself. We are we are working. However, I've I was using these properties before uh, as an example of the scores of dilapidated, abandoned, and dangerous properties for the children in the neighborhood, for the adjacent property owners who have experienced a lower value in their property because of these neighboring dilapidated eyesores. For another example, I would point to the uh, five-year abandoned home that was, was mentioned in the, in the Waterloo Courier in February of the home on Fayette Street, uh, I think the 200 block of Fayette Street that was, uh, is a most endangered properties in Iowa that has been abandoned uh, since 05 and is still there that's an, an eyesore and a detriment to the neighborhood. That property has not been affected. I just recently took a picture of that property and it has not changed at all. And if not, it's gotten a little worse since that time. Just to point of clarification, Dr. Blackwell and I are calling for speedy and strong corrections of the scores of dilapidated and or abandoned dwellings, mostly in the east side of town. We're also concerned about the, the absentee landlords and ask that they be assured that they have to be responsible for their property and take it and bring it up to, 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 to uh, snuff. Dr. Blackwell will follow me with uh, his points on the, on the property that, that you own and are responsible for. Mr. Mr. Toomey, I know I've know, known you and I know Dr. Blackwell for about 25 years. And um, one thing that I would like to do, because the comments have been made that there is never in your 40, 50 years, you've never seen anything done on the northeast side uh, or that um, St. Mary's and other um, other uh, decayed properties that nothing has ever happened. So I would invite you and Dr. Blackwell to come down and sit down and have a conversation uh, so we can take a look at it, so we can let you know exactly uh, where we're at, what has happened, so we can let you know the history of these dilapidated houses, how they got to that 
to let you know the state process that the city has to go to even wrestle these away from um, derelict landlords. But I would invite you and Dr. Blackwell to come in sometime to sit down and talk to you, talk to me. I can show you the list, show you what we've done, what we're doing, and how we got to where we're at in some instances as well. So my door has and still is open for the both of you. All right? Is there anyone else that would like to comment? Well, I'm glad to hear you say what you just said. My name is Michael Blackwell, 5125 Millennium Drive in Cedar Falls. Uh, I'm well aware of uh, what I'm talking about uh, as far as Chamberlain and St. Mary is concerned. Early in May, the people of Jackson, Mississippi, brought in not only the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, but also the Department of Justice to address the polluted drinking water and sewage problems that we've seen reported on the national news. They also began on uh, uh, collecting statements from residents to detail how much these issues have adversely affected their lives. In Flint, Michigan, the drinking water crisis suffered by residents there has resulted in 42 felony and misdemeanor counts against governmental officials, ranging from perjury to official misconduct in office, to extortion, to obstruction of justice, to willful neglect of duty, to involuntary manslaughter. The bacteria and lead leaching into homes from untreated water from the Flint River resulted in at least 12 deaths and 90 folks sickened by Legionnaire's disease over a seven-year period. Additionally, we also saw uh, the terrible circumstances that occurred regarding that crumbling Davenport apartment set for demolition without thorough investigation that may not only the major news, radio and television across the state, but also the national news. Such negligence was certainly, certainly not benign. These three instances of environmental injustice have parallels in the city of Waterloo with regard to the unfinished business at the former Chamberlain property and the still standing dilapidated structures at the campus of what was St. Mary's. These endangered places, among others that Reverend Larry Stummy and I have spoken about for the past two city council meetings, concerns that the residents in those areas have experienced and conveyed for years have not been extirpated. Meanwhile, the quality of the life of the residents around those places have been steadily and substantively diminishing. Repeatedly, these individuals and families have been deprived of satisfaction and given words of appeasement, which inevitably fail, fall on deaf ears from lack of proactive engagement and transparent communication. We come before you once again to insist on responsible redressing of these matters and genuine accountability. Further deferral of ethical service on behalf of the people directly affected in the foreseeable future will impel them towards assertive action, such as in Jackson and in Flint, and as recently as today in Davenport, including effective media coverage to ensure evidentiary environmental justice is mandated and implemented. Thank you. Absolutely, and as I mentioned, thank you. Chamberlain's had set for 40 years and nobody did anything about it for years. Chamberlain's is being remediated under my administration. St. Mary's is slated to come down. We just found the dollars uh, with Mr. Rudy Jones in community development to tear down St. Mary's. That's slated to come down. That was a nasty court fight to even get that property from a derelict landlord. As I said, my door is always open. Thank you so much for your comments. Is there anyone, else, anyone else that would like to address the city council? That hasn't already something. All right. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Um, <clears throat> um, firstly, before uh, you two have the chance to leave, I don't appreciate just go, yeah, just being disingenuous. Okay. Don't appreciate it. But uh, I have two things that I wanted to mention. So my newsletter, it's going to be coming out this week. So that one ward, it's not super exciting, but it will be there. Um, I've had some uh, specific questions about what could be in it and what could you put this in it? Could you put that in it? So I have to ask our city attorney what I can put in it and what I can't put in it. Um, 
just I just have a few questions about certain kind I put company then a question I've been asked is I want to redo my I have to redo my sidewalks so I don't know if I can use this company or this company or this company so I just want to know if I can put a list of who has uh, their licenses with the city and who's bonded with the city in my newsletter little things like that so I'm just going to ask him later about that but that'll be out this week so if you want to be on it, please go ahead and send me an email to my city email address, and then I will make sure that it gets to you. Um, one other thing about trees. Um, on Huntington, uh, I had it here. Huntington yes, Huntington Road and, uh, I can't think of the roads. There are the, some trees in the way that are blocking people from being able to turn left uh, to see that way. So I was just wondering if we could go out and check it out sometime this week. Just shoot me an email to the area you're talking about. We'll get a dispatch to staff for you. Great. We'll get, to, we'll get on it, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Um, so first I'd like to um, uh, let everyone know, happy Pride Month, um, because it's an important month where we celebrate all Americans, regardless of their orientation or identity. Um, I, I will say that, that Waterloo does have a, a seat at the table with the EPA and, and other folks uh, up here who are working very hard. Um, I was very fortunate at the end of May to attend a, a two-day conference in Washington, D.C. with the Environmental Protection Agency, and, and I've been sending lots of emails to staff about things that we can learn and things that we can do and uh, moving forward. And finally, I'd like to congratulate you, Mr. Mayor, city staff, um, the artists, and all the folks who made um, what is easily the largest public arts display in our city that came online last week it is uh fantastic if you have not yet been down to the fourth street bridge uh please do so um it's open from about a half hour before dusk till midnight um it is amazing commemoration of our veterans um, as well as a display of the unifying nature of artwork so congratulations and thank you to all who made that project possible all right thank you sir is there anyone else with comments, please? Mr. Mayor. Sir. Just quickly, I'd just like to remind people that even though fireworks are on sale, fireworks aren't legal until the 3rd or 4th of July. <laughs> just want to throw that out there for the general public. So, uh, uh, And uh, secondly, when on the discussion of trees, I've had a number of, of citizens contact me about, about trees, and, and I, I forward that on to leisure services, and they're handled pretty quick. They, they do a great job, and so if you have an issue with trees, if it's on city parking, if, or, uh, that's leader services, and uh, if it's on private property, I believe, do we go we go through code enforcement, Paul, or can you give us a little in-service on how to contact and who to contact on trees? Paul Hudding, leisure services director. Um, we work with the attorney's office in the case of a privately owned tree, uh, so city code states that it's against the law, I guess, if that's the proper term, to have a tree on your private property that is in a hazardous condition. The city forester makes that determination, but the city attorney's office uh, works to see that there's ultimately that that tree comes down. And Marty, you might want to expand on that. You're more familiar with where it goes after we've determined it to be that way. but. Again, those on the city right of way or in a city park along the trails that anything that's on city property, uh, you can contact us at Leisure Services. And especially if it's a safety issue, we try to, to do that as quickly as possible. So I don't know if Marty wants to add more to that or not. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> right. Silence is affirmation. All right. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to close public. Nope, sorry. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, good evening, everyone. I have a couple of uh, comments that I want to make. Um, really grateful, Mayor, that you opened the door for Pastor Stunny and Dr. Blackwell to come in and have a conversation with you about the uh, dilapidated um, abandoned building on Franklin and Benton in East, in East 2nd Street, as well as St. Mary's and the Chamberlain. Um, construction site. Uh, I think it's very important that the community knows what's going on and so somehow we have to open up the the, the uh, network of communication so that um, this is the third time they've come here. Um, there should have been some way of knowing this. So I think 
um, it will be my responsibility to publicly um, make the community, especially since it's my award, aware of the things that are going on in these buildings. I also commend them for keeping the pressure on us because it's important that they do so, especially when we're calling on um, outsiders to see Waterloo and Cedar Valley as a place to live, live Valley and those kinds of things. These abandoned buildings, these uh, potentially dangerous uh, sites uh, diminish our image and we don't want our image diminished anymore, tarnished anymore. Not only that, but decreases property value as well as serve as a really um, a diminishing kind of sense of pride of one's community and feeling as though one has been neglected in some way. So I think it's important that we do that, and I do commend them for keeping it before us. Um, that's that thing. Um, the other, I would like to not only make the community aware of what we're doing, um, but to also expedite the process in some way. I know that a council person, Grider, said he sits on the EPA. I think given the, the, the fact that environmental uh, injustice adversely and disproportionately impacts uh, BIPOC communities and poor communities, uh, it would be important for a representative to also be on that or have a seat at the table to talk about our concerns and issues as well from our perspective. Um, so I don't know if that's possible, but it's something that we can we could talk about um, and, and see how we can make that happen. So those are the two uh, comments regarding those issues. I have um, some constituents that are concerned about abandoned property not being taken care of, uh, for example, and I met with code enforcement who really gave me much insight into how overworked and, or, and burdened they are, how difficult it is for them to get around and do everything that needs to be done um, in these communities as it relates to the garbage and trash that's outside as, as well as the lawn being three feet, the grass being three feet tall. Um, it's uh, for the neighbors. Um, um, they're they're crying out and they're saying that they, they need some assistance um, in getting that done. So I don't know code, in, code enforcement. I feel bad about it. I don't know what else we can do to help you, but somehow we need to consider providing them with with some sort of help to make this um, process more uh, expedient. I don't know if we could solicit um, volunteers to to help. I don't know what the answer is, but I'm willing to sit at the table and to try to come up with, with some answers. And then um, lastly, I had a concern, concerns expressed to me about the truck traffic on Newell. And um, I've been concerned about that as well. Um, and so um, I don't know who, because I'm still going through the orientation process, uh, maybe police department um, to talk about what we could possibly do. I know it says, uh, we don't want trucks to drive on on Newell, but maybe we could say um, if you drive, there's a fine, you know, a sign that says you will be fine. Trucks that drive will be fine or something um, driving up and down um, Newell Street in um, adjacent to uh, Porky's Red Carpet and um, the golf course. So those are just some of the concerns. Um, I'm lastly sad to say that I was away when the bridge was lit, so I had to see it online. Um, but seeing it online was amazing, even though I wasn't there. I wish I could have been there to experience it in person. Um, so as soon as I'm home, I will do that with my grandbabies so they can ah and ooh um, as the lights light up on the bridge. So those are just some of my comments. Yep. And we still we still have yet to have our meeting as well, uh, just uh, catching each other with a busy schedule. So um, definitely appreciate uh, your comments. Um, and uh, yes, uh, I feel the sense of urgency, too. Um, so once you get back, let's sit down and talk. And I think I'll be out for a couple of days next week, too. So we just got to sit down and, and get some time set up. All right, um, Mr. Nichols, do you have anything for us? You want to give us an update? 
everybody's happy and, and healthy here. Thank you for all the wonderful comments that um, was given by everybody. Um, we're just settling into our new reality. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to close public comments. Second. Motion's been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Public comments closed. All right, I would like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda with the addition of 1A1 uh, bills payment in the amount of $4,571,415.72. Second. Mr. Mayor. The motion has been made with second. Mr. Bozen. I had asked to have item 33 and 34 on the consent agenda uh, pulled for further consideration. All right. So uh, there is a motion and second for all the items on the consent agenda except for items 33 and 34. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Aye. Present. All right, okay. so uh, items one through 32 of the consent agenda uh, has passed. Uh, Mr. Bozen. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution supporting an application by 3350 University Avenue LLC for the Iowa Workforce Development Tax Credit Program application to the IA Economic Development Authority to construct 95 new housing units located at 3350 University Avenue, including the potential infill incentive upon substantial complete completion and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. And number 34 is a resolution supporting an application by FDP OC LLC for the Iowa Workforce Housing Tax Credit Program application to the Iowa Economic Development Authority to construct 69 new housing units located at 501 and 503 Commercial Street, including a potential of 345,000 infill incentive upon substantial completion and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. All right, Mr. Bozen. I would like to ask Mr. Anderson a few questions, if I could, please. Yep. And the first one is that if Noel could just explain what workforce housing tax credits are for the people. Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. So the state of Iowa gives incentives for new housing projects. It's a statewide competitive process um, to where um, you can get workforce housing tax credits for um, what the state believes to be eligible housing projects. Um, the state's looking at, uh, there's no uh, income limitations or anything like that on the workforce housing tax credits, so they can be market rate. Um, they have given uh, tax credits out for uh, single family subdivision development as well as infill as well as uh, multifamily. Okay, now it also requires a financial buy in from the city, is that correct? There is a local match required um, at roughly $1,000 per unit. Um, that can be achieved through grant programs, it can be achieved through tax abatement or tax rebates. So, on item number 33, that's a potential of, of if, if we basically, it says that we're looking at a potential to use a new infill incentive program for this, for this project. Correct, or they could achieve the local tax uh, match by the uh, Cura. Okay, and that was my question because $475,000, technically right now it doesn't even, it, it doesn't even fit the parameters of infill development. That is correct. It does, the, the current program does not allow for this project to be a, an infill program. Okay, and it's, and it's really not 95 new housing units if they're just remodeling existing units. Correct. That, that's the discussion we're having about the new program, the infill program, if we want to change it for rehabilitation of units um, or if it's just going to stay for new construction of units. Okay. And then, uh, and, and you're aware of, of, the, of their tax imp tax situation because I looked them up on Blackhawk County online this address and it hasn't paid property taxes in basically in years. Correct. We are aware of that. And I know that they're fighting their value as well. Because if if we end up if we end up pushing forward and and this council, which I don't I don't support remodeling as infill development, but if this council pushes that forward, uh, that's like I said, it's four hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Right now they're their current tax situation is about $24,000 a year. And of course, we'd have new value, so the taxes may go up, but that money of the new value would go into the University Avenue TIF, correct? 
That is correct. Because that's in the tip, but we'd still retain the original value. It'd be, it'd be for everything above that base value, yes. Right. So if, if we were to invest $475,000 in this program and we re, we, they pay $24,000 is what we would receive or the county would receive, and we get 46% of that, that's like $11,040 uh, to the city. And, and that's, a, that's a turnaround for that 475000 in 42 years. And that, that just seems like a, a really long time for us to get our investment back because anything above and beyond that original investment is going to be uh, going into the University of TIF. That is correct. We definitely would want to look at the numbers. And then on 34, we, we really don't even have, we don't, the council doesn't have any information on who this is outside of, an, uh, outside of the LC name. So it is the uh, uh, Roy Carver Jr. Um, is the owner of the building um, out of the Iowa City area. Um, they are the current owners. They would be the developers um, on the project. And that would fit infill development because it's, it is new construction in there. And Correct. There's never, been any, there's never been any housing units on that lot. Right. Um, and, and then also you were looking at funding that, that portion of it through TIF. That is correct. Whereas the other one, the, the $475,000 would be bond money. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and that first one is really a catch-22 because I don't know if folks knew what it was prior to that uh, being closed down. It needs significant uh, amount of work. Um, it wasn't a place uh, that, yeah, yeah, significant amount of work. And so uh, I don't know what they're going to do if council doesn't support, but that place was terrible. So glad to see something's on the agenda to try to help um, do something positive out of a... Sorry. And then if we vote for this tonight, it doesn't mean we have to follow through with it. Correct. We we're, we're, we're offering support of some type, and obviously they're both eligible for the tax abatement program as well, um, either through the TIF or, or through the CURA. Um, so it doesn't mean we're doing anything. That's why we put the word potential in there for the infill investment um, portions is because we do not have a development agreement with them yet. So if we... If we vote this forward, it doesn't mean that we're going to com commit $475,000 to this project. That is correct. That would be done through the development agreement itself. And we'd also have to change the infill development policy in order to do that. For, for item 33, yes. Yes, okay. Thank you. All right. Madam Clerk, uh, this uh, vo uh, electronic vote. Nay. For both projects or one? For the first one, the University Avenue one. Okay. It's no for Okay. So those yes for 33, no for 34, Ms. Creighton Smith? No for 33 and yes for 34. Okay. Thank you. All right, just really quickly, we have um, uh, Curtis Young is being appointed to the uh, Complete Streets Advisory Committee. I don't necessarily see him. Um, you're not Curtis, are you, Muhammad? No. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but thank you so much uh, for your service, uh, Curtis. And I think that's all to be recognized. All right, could someone take number one, please? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that is for fiscal year 2023 Greenbelt Lake REAP Grant Project Phase 2, contract number 1085. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak towards a REAP Grant Project? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral and written comments. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to adopt a resolution confirming approval of specifications, bid documents, form of contract, etc., and authorizing to proceed. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Council questions? All right. Uh, that's an electronic vote. Hey, it came out. Good. 
Yes. And that passed. All right, that passed unanimously 7 0. All right. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, and instruct city clerk to read bids. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, Madam Clerk. Okay, our estimate for the base bid was $219,145.83. Our estimate for the alternate was $13,000, and our total base and alternate estimate was $232,145.83. Our first bidder was Beath Construction Corporation of Cedar Falls, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount for the base bid was $191,761.50. Their alternate bid was $22,500, and their total bid amount was $214,261.50. Our second and final bidder was Lodge Construction of Clarksville, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their base bid was $229,210. Their alternate bid was $31,500, and their total bid amount was $260,710. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to adopt a resolution approving award of bid to Veith Construction Corporation of Cedar Falls, Iowa, in the amount of $214,261.50, approving the contract, bonds, and certificate of insurance in conjunction with the FY 2023 Greenbelt Lake REAP Grant Project Phase 2, base bid plus alternate contract number 1085, and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. Second. That motion has been made with a second. Uh, council questions? All right, that is an electronic vote. Please submit your votes. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, that passed unanimously. Thank you, Council. Number two, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing for the sale and conveyance of city property located at 217 Reed Street and the amount of $11,000 to Kevin E. Rose and Michelle L. Rose with the development agreement. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Uh, the hearing is now open. Uh, are there any questions about this item from anyone in the um, audience? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing closed. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt a res resolution approving the sale and conveyance of city property located at 217 Reed Street in the amount of $11,000 to Kevin E. Rose and Michelle L. Rose and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. Second. That motion has been made with a second. Council questions? All right. Uh, that is an electronic vote for the sale and conveyance. Please submit your votes. Aye. All right, that passed unanimously. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution approving a development agreement with Kevin E. Rose and Michelle L. Rose in conjunction with the rehabilitation of two, uh, 217 Reed Street and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Uh, council, please uh, submit your votes for the resolution. Aye. <clears throat> All right, thank you. That item passes. Number three, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Um, Ms. Wilder. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that is for the Street Department Seal Coat Program. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to the Street Department Seal Coat Program? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral and written comments. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Mr. Hearing closed. Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to make a motion approving a resolution or a resolution confirming the specific specifications, bid documents, form of contract, et cetera, and authorizing to proceed. Second. That motion has been made with second. Council questions about this item? Mr. Right. Mayor? Yes. I'd like to make oh, a wait, motion we got to... a vote on it. Um, so Just please uh, <laughs> give me on my toes. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, the com confirming of approval of specifications, please cast your vote. Aye. All right, thank you. We have, uh, that was, that passed. Mr. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file and instruct city clerk to read the bids. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Madam Clerk. Okay, our one and only bidder was Bituminous Materials and Supply LP of Des Moines, Iowa. They have three different products they provided a bid on. The first is HFMS-28, quantity of 15,000 gallons, a unit price of $2.63 for a total bid amount of $39,450. Their second product is CRS-2P, 70,000 gallons, unit price $3.09 for a total bid of $216,300. And our final product is CSS-1 dilute uh, slash four colon one and a quantity of 38,000 gallons and a unit price of $1.73 and a total bid of $65,740. All right, thank you. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion approving a resolution award of bid to Batumius Materials and Supply LP of Des Moines, Iowa in the amount of $321,490, approving the contract bond certificate of insurance in conjunction with the street department seal code program and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute the documents. Second. A motion has been made with the second council. Um, please cast your vote for awarding the bid. Aye. All right, thank you council. That passed uh, uh, unanimously. Um, could someone take uh, one and two, please? Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd like to adopt the following resolutions. Number one is a resolution approving five-year collective bargaining agreement with ASME Local 1195 Planners and Engineers with wage reopener in years four and five. ASME Local 1195 Police Lieutenants and Code Enforcement Officers with wage reopeners in years four and five. Teamsters Local 238 with wage reopeners in years four and five. Municipal Employees Local Union Number 177, Communications Workers of America, Waterloo Police Protective Association with Wage and Insurance Reopeners in Years 4 and 5, and International Association of Firefighters Local Number 66 with Wage and Insurance Reopeners in Year 4 and 5, and authorizing the Mayor and Human, Re Human Resources Director to execute said document. And Number 2 is a resolution approving a 3% salary increase for non-bargaining employees effective July 1st, 2023. Second. That motion has been made with a second. Um, is there anyone that would like to speak to these items? David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Uh, please remember the people who pay these wages don't necessarily uh, get that much that they on on their increases uh, I calculated the wages I make on Social Security and it's right at $13 an hour I looked over the uh, the sheet on the wage increases etc and, and what people are getting paid and it doesn't near calculate what I make and I'm the one I'm one of the ones that pay these wages. Uh, I, I don't quite understand either that we have a five-year uh, collective bargaining agreement, but yet we're going to review it in year four and five on all of these that are listed. Uh, my house evaluation went up 34%. I calculated from 20... 21 to 2022, my utilities went up 24%. My wages didn't go up that much, but yet we keep paying these people, and I don't say they're not needed. I'm saying that they're not keeping up with what the people that are paying their wages are getting paid. So it just seems a little unfair to the citizens of Waterloo to keep paying this kind of wage for when we don't get that kind of increase in Social Security, in our 
private businesses are not able to pay that kind of wage increase. And that's for both of these, one and two. Uh, many people don't get a 3% raise. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to make comments? Going a second time. All right, council, questions? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. So I, I just want to say that the, the folks that we're talking about are the folks that keep us safe at night. They're the folks who run into burning buildings. They're the folks who help us when we need to find information. Um, these folks are, are doing incredibly hard work. I. I agree with folks that Social Security hasn't increased enough, and that's absolutely a conversation uh, that I know I and others are having with our federal representatives. But um, we we have to attract quality employees, and and I will put our city employees up against any other city's employee uh, employees in the state and really in the nation. Um, but we have to be competitive. Um, we, Chief Leipold. Uh, Others can tell us how, how few applicants we are getting for some of these very high needs positions. If we start cutting wages, we are going to have to brown out fire stations. We are going to have to increase police officers' workloads. We are going to have to potentially lose accreditation at the library. Um, I absolutely get um, that things are thin. I will continue to advocate with the federal government that sets social security increases, but these folks are doing incredibly important work, and I'm very thankful for the work that they all do. Well said. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I have a question for Mr. Dunn. Mm -hmm. <coughs> First of all, sir, I, I, would, I would really appreciate, I, I think council would like to be more engaged during this process so that we're kind of kept up to date on where we're at. Um, we did get an email with a tentative bargaining agreement in, on April 26th because I responded to that email with, with some questions. Uh, I, you haven't gotten back to me, but I can ask them today. When we had a meeting on the police department contract, we were in, at a consensus, but the one thing that we weren't in favor of, can I speak to that now since it was an executive session? I just needed. All right. The one thing, the one thing that we weren't in favor of was was a sliding scale on longevity. We clearly stated in that meeting that we wouldn't support that. And then April twenty sixth, we get that, and it's here. It is. Am I overstepping here? I generally think it's not appropriate to talk in public session that's discussed in closed session. Well, that's what I asked. I. Well, I'll just I'll just leave it at that. I won't I won't ask a, a, another question. But let's let's just discuss the longevity. Not what was was discussed, but we're pitting departments against other departments. Every other department longevity caps out at thirty years, and it and it and it's sixteen roughly sixteen hundred dollars a uh, a year for for longevity. Or yeah, I think it's a year. Is that correct? It's not sixteen hundred a month. What is what is your question? When you cap out at longevity, the other departments at th at thirty years. Mm -hmm. Is that a, is that a monthly monthly amount, or is it is it uh, it's like sixteen hundred bucks? A, is that a month? It's a year. It's a year. Okay, but under the new police department contract, it caps out at twenty years, not thirty like all the other city departments, and it's based on a sliding scale of the first year's officers' pay. Mm -hmm. So every time an off every time we have a pay raise their longevity goes up, correct? Correct. So at the end of the three-year contract, where the wages are open, their, long, their top, out, top longevity, even though we're, we're dropping at 10 years, is over $2,200 a month. So- A year, 2200 2200 a year. So that being said, we're, the police department have, have longevity capping at 20 years. They're getting $600 more uh, a year for longevity. And everybody else in the city is 30 years, and, and they're getting $600 less. And I, I think it's unfair to the other city employees. I think we're capping, we're pitting other departments against each other. And, and 
I would have, you know, I, I tried to address this issue April April 26th when I responded to, to when you sent out the, the tentative agreement. And I'm not going to hold up other people's pay raises and vote no on this because I'm upset with the fact that, that the longevity is, is changing when we were in favor of it. So I, I would like in the future when we're doing contract negotiations that at least we're kept in the loop because the only time that we heard anything about this was one meeting that we had, and then the tentative agreement that came to us on April 26th. Okay, and, and your question? That, that I, my, it wasn't a question, it was a statement that I would like council to be more in the loop okay. to the process, if we could. Is that, is that un, I don't think that's unreasonable. Thank you, Mr. Boza. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Uh, Voting for number one and number two. Please uh, state your vote electronically. Aye. Aye. All right, pass uh, seven zero. Thank you, Council. Uh, could someone say three, four, and five? Mayor. Yes, sir. Move to uh, move. The following resolution, the resolution approving a contract with Waterloo Housing Trust Fund number 10 and the amount of $47,470 in conjunction with the emergency repair program and authorizing the board chair to execute that document. Number four, resolution approving addendum number two to a professional services agreement with Robinson Engineering Company of Independence, Iowa, originally executed April 5th, 2021, in an amount not to exceed $12,484 in conjunction with the fiscal year 2022 North Crossing Area Study Contract Number 1050 and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute that document. Number five, a resolution approving a professional services agreement with the HR Green in an amount not to exceed $4,600 to complete a phase one environmental site assessment, ESA, on a property located at 200 East Mullen Avenue and authorizing the mayor and uh, to execute that document. Second. All right, that motion has been made with a second. Um, anyone with any questions on these items? Council? Is there, okay, all right. Um, please cast your votes, Council, on items three, four, and five. <clears throat> Ms. Creighton-Smith, how do you vote? Ms. Creighton-Smith, um, how do you vote For three, four, on three, four, and five? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, uh, that passed unanimously. Uh, six, seven, and eight, please. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to adopt the following resolution. The first one is a resolution approving a real estate purchase agreement with Robert D. Brandt for the city's acquisition of 1335 Mulberry Street and adjacent lot in the amount of $12,580 plus up to $2,000 in closing costs and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Number seven, a resolution approving a subordination agreement with Union at North Crossing LP for the benefit of Huntington, Huntington National Bank pertaining to obligations under the real estate purchase agreement dated August 1st, 2022 and amended April 13th, 2023 by instru instrument numbers 2023 through 6156 um, filed October 14th, 2022 and 2023 13814 filed April 25th, 2023, in the Blackhawk County at, with the Blackhawk County Recorder's Office for a project located north of 501 Lake Street and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. And number eight, a resolution approving a development agreement with Babbage Properties LLC for the construction of a new duplex on an infill lot, including a $10,000 infill incentive upon substantial completion of said duplex and authorizing mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. That motion has been made with a second. Is there anyone with questions on this item? Please come forward. State your name and address for the record and let us know your thoughts, please. Hi, my name is Doris Diedrich. I live at 620 Keystone Street, Waterloo, Iowa, 
5073. Mayor our heart and to the council, I would like to make a comment regarding the union at North Crossing LP project, um, which is taking place now north of my home, 620 Keystone Street. I understand there will be a multi-family project that includes or highlights a 180 unit apartment complex comprised of three story buildings that will offer a mix of one, two, three bedroom units. I want to ask the question, when the developers and investors came with this plan, were there discussions on extending my neighborhood with single family homes, such as those going up at the Edison build out project? Also, I understand that there will be a senior activity center. I would like to know what does the future hold for the Jesse Cosby Center, which is also in my ward. Um, I also uh, work at Unity Point Allen Hospital. I know they're building a Starbucks inside there. I was wondering why the Starbucks couldn't be built at North Crossing, being more for the community to have access to, and what are we saying to our community? I know Ward 4 residents should be able to have a voice um, the, with these projects and with other things that Habitat for Humanity is doing in our area for home ownership. Um, I would like to request a meeting, if possible, to find out more about this project with the developer for North Crossing Project. Thank you. All right, and, and um, I'll, um, if you uh, call, call your office tomorrow, um, we'll get a meeting set up and we can talk about, it would be good though to really just take a deep dive look at the area over the last 10 years or so too. So you can kind of see all the pieces coming together. So uh, okay. we'll get a meeting set up as well. And I didn't know they were having a Starbucks going inside. So you just, uh, <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know about that yes. because people have been asking um, about a coffee shop. And so we've been trying to reach out with different developers and uh, folks to see uh, what their interest would be. But of course, you know, uh, starting from where we started at with that empty shell of Logan Plaza, you know, the process is taking some time, but it, it looks a lot better right and it's going to get better but i'd love to sit down and have a conversation with you so you can kind of see the vision Noel, i don't know if you have Thank any you. anything to say as well um is it a senior uh activity center or is it a senior care facility which one is it thank you thank you <clears throat> noel anderson community planning development director i believe the unity points actually involved with the senior center and with the daycare so we can definitely get some more information on on how those will impact others then there also is some land on, on Homer and uh, Niles that uh, could have the potential of some new single family out there as well that the city owns. So we're, we're looking at all types of plans. Yep. And it'll open up between 12 to 18 commercial lots uh, in the area as well to be able to try to attract some type of, whether it's retail, whether it's uh, restaurants, but be able to open up some levels of retail in the area. But I can talk to you about that. And I'll do it. We'll just do it when... Um, uh, Dr. Creighton Smith gets back in town so we can sit down and look at the map of that area and see what's going on. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, oh, is you. there a way that we could make it um, available to the residents that live in that area? We could bring them in um, so that we could sit down and, and talk to, to them just as we did over on the, the Kimball um, project. If we could bring any interested um, resident or homeowner in from that area to talk with us about it. I, I know you've only been here a short time, but that could be the first ward meeting. So let's do it. We'll help you organize it. Okay. But uh, and do you, um, if you wanted to come in more immediately, <laughs> we can. If you want, if they wanted to come in more immediately, then we can get something scheduled this week with them, and then we can, um, when you get back, okay. set up. Um, uh, award meeting. I had one. I forgot. I had two of them. 
Um, but the attendance wasn't that great. And so I love to get back over by my mama's house. And so uh, we'll work something out when you get here. Is that, does that work? Great. Yes. Okay. So call tomorrow. We'll get you in within the next day or so. And then we'll organize something a little bit larger with uh, fourth ward councilwoman. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Other questions? Uh, for items six, seven, and eight, please cast your votes. <laughs> Dr. Smith? Aye. Aye. All right, so that passed uh, seven, zero. Uh, nine, 10, let me see, and 11, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to adopt a resolution approving a development agreement with Babic Properties LLC for the construction of a four unit residential building and infill lot located in Ravenwood Circle, south of Ravenwood Road, including $20,000 infill incentive upon substantial completion of said four units, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. Number 10 is a resolution approving a professional service agreement with Automatic <coughs> Systems Company of Ames, Iowa, in the amount of $86,850 in conjunction with the satellite blower control panel upgrades and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. And number 11 is adopting a resolution approving an agreement for a traffic safety improvement program funding grant with the Iowa Department of Transportation in the amount of $500,000 in conjunction with the construction of a roundabout at Hammond Avenue and Shawless Road and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Is there anyone uh, here that may have questions for staff? Council? Quick questions, sir, on number sure. 11. And... I, I'm curious if, if since we've in, installed four-way stops, if we've had any incidences out there. I don't think Randy has the, the traffic study information today, but I think the four-way stop is working quite well. And based on the information that council received, we're going to have to come up with an additional million dollars for that project. And, um, and if that's bond money, that's going to be an issue with what we're going to be allowed to bond uh, in the next few years. Uh, I'm not a big fan of roundabouts to begin with, but uh, I'm, I'm curious because of the four-way stop seems to be a functional system right there on that road. Uh, if, if we ever need a four-way stop on Shawless, I'll guarantee it's Kimball and Shawless because you can't get across that road when, when Orange School is starting or letting out during the day. It's solid traffic. You can't get on Shawless to cross. So... I, I know we had a bad accident there a year ago or last year, but does it warrant a roundabout? Yeah, I thought at the time council was kind of pushing us to get a roundabout. Maybe not you, but others that mentioned it. But Mohammed, do you want to tell us like the the mindset or uh, reasoning uh, for the the roundabout here? Is it um, safe or is it not? Yeah, uh, Mohammed Elahi, uh, interim director of traffic operations. Uh, at the time, that big accident, that bad accident, was not the reason why we recommended a roundabout. That was the reason we went back and looked at the accidents. There were a lot of accidents, including a lot of injury accidents. So we had to do something. And the four-way stops normally are an interim measure. They're not permanent for a, a permanent solution. Four-way stops do uh, reduce the accidents, although I don't have that... Uh, no, those numbers now, but they are not efficient, especially at that location because of the pattern, traffic pattern and volumes. Uh, they increase delays and in, in, introduce inefficiencies. A roundabout would take care of that. So it will be both safe and efficient. So th this roundabout will be designed to accommodate semi-traffic? That uh, first part of the design would be Yes, it will be. It won't be a mini roundabout like we're having at the other South place. Street. This will be regular, but the first part of the work would be a small uh, traffic study to figure out uh, the capacity and the movements. Yes, it, they will. I okay, suppose. because there is, I, I live in that area, and I, I, I know Mr. Nichols does too, and there's, there's a, a lot of semi-traffic on there at certain parts of the day, and, and it would definitely have to accommodate that. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank it. you. Any other questions? Anyone? All right, council, that it was made with a motion and a second for uh, 9, 10, and 11. Please cast your electronic vote. Aye. Yes. 
All right, thank you. Uh, that passed unanimously. Uh, could someone take 12, 13, and 14? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to adopt the following resolutions. Number 12 is a resolution approving amendment number one to the agreement with Strand Associates, Inc. of Madison, Wisconsin, originally executed on December 8th, 2022, to amend the completion date from April 28th, 2023 to July 31st, 2023, in conjunction with the Related Services Third Party Renewable Natural Gas Project and authorizing the mayor to execute said document. Number 13 is a resolution approving supplemental agreement number five with AECOM Technical Services, Inc. of Waterloo, Iowa, in the amount of $125,000 in conjunction with the Planning and Engineering Services Agreement originally executed on September 8th, 2015, and authorizing the mayor to execute said document. And finally, 14 is a resolution approving amendment number one with Ritland and Kuiper Architects of Waterloo, Iowa, in the amount of $476,275 in conjunction with the Gates Park Redevelopment Service Agreement originally executed on June 20th, 2022, and authorizing the mayor to execute said document. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Is there anyone in the um, uh, audience that would like to ask questions or have concerns or comments? Council? I have a question regarding um, item 12. Um, the original date for completion was April 28th, and we've amended that completion date. Was there a reason in particular? Did they run into a problem or what happened? Yes, uh, Mr. Bennett will come up and explain. Uh, Randy Bennett, Public Works Division Manager. Um, it, it's just the process for which it took. Um, this is a, a pretty unique process for us for both at, at the lagoon and the um, wastewater plant to be able to do this. And it's, it's just the process of um, one, how many individuals that we had originally bid to it, and then going through the process of vetting it out, which to kind of give you an update, we did narrow it down to three um, qualified applicants, um, which we ended up having those interviews last week, and then we're just trying to, to uh, wind that up here shortly. Okay. So it's just the number of volume of people that bid on it, and it's just taking a little bit longer to do it. Can you give about a 45-second um, overview of what this does? This is pretty big, yep. mm -hmm. big for our area. It's part of our climate initiatives, too. So could Correct. you please talk Correct. about it? Yeah, so just to, uh, like I said, a little bit more background. So... Um, when we originated the RFP, this is for uh, biogas. So this is actually taken, if you've ever seen out by the wastewater plant or at the plant itself, where we're taking the, the gas right now and we're just flaring that off. So part of the mm -hmm. process um, in the RFP is that the, uh, um, whoever we end up selecting would end up making improvements to our lagoon. So that was one aspect of it, where they would replace the lid and then they would actually clean the inside of it out, of any of the grease and, and the material in there. The other thing is, is we'd actually take that gas and we would turn it into pipeline quality um, to be able to, to, to pen, uh, potentially make revenue off of that as well. And we're doing this both at the wastewater and the, um, and the lagoon. So depending on which applicant we potentially go with, um, that's going to tie into that. So, so it's pretty exciting. It's just it's just been a very long process to get to this point. So we're capturing gas and then potentially turning that into energy and a revenue energy. source for the city as well. Yep. And so you had a couple different um, people that were thinking about doing this. There was some uh, improvements that needed to be made uh, to the lagoon in that area. Plus, um, just it's new for us as well. So it took a little while to get to this particular point. So there were some changes that needed to happen to make sure that this project uh, is done uh, the right way and, and meets all of our standards. So it's really a huge step uh, for the city of Waterloo um, in being exactly. able to do this and protect the environment. Correct. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Council. All right, electronic vote. Please cast your votes. Yes. Right, uh, that passed seven zero. Thank you, Council. Uh, we have one ordinance on the agenda today. Could someone take number one, Mr. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file and consider and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the City of Waterloo's traffic code by repealing subsection two hundred and sixty-eight A Mockingbird Lane, west side of the forty-one hundred eleven block or forty-one hundred block of section five fifty-one parking prohibited at all times on certain streets and its entirety. Second. That motion has been made with a second. Do we have any questions about this particular item? Um, 
That is a uh, electronic vote. Council, please let us know your thoughts, or your votes rather. Yes. All right, that passed um, 7 0. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. A motion has been made with a second. Uh, council questions. Um, so, roll call, no, uh, electronic vote again. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor. I passed. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, and consider, and pass for the second and third time and adopt said ordinance. Second. A motion has been made with the second. Um, please cast your vote. Yes. All right. I pass unanimously. Thank you, Council. Uh, just a quick reminder, this week is, tomorrow is a holiday. It is Be Nice to Mayor Day. Uh, it's Mayor's <laughs> birthday, and it's a new, um, but it's also My Waterloo Days. If you hadn't had an opportunity to go out and volunteer to help with My Waterloo Days, please do so, but it's a great opportunity uh, for our community to be able to celebrate our wonderful um, uh, city. So I'd love to see you all there. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to be made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.